Foot Clan, if you are a champion, and there's a good chance you are because you're listening to this podcast, like my esteemed colleagues here, don't forget about fantasy. I am a champ. Thanks, oh my gosh, Jace. you're right. <laughs> Shut up. Why am I doing this? Uh, don't forget about fantasychamps.com. It is the best place to get a trophy. And right now they are back with the free ring code. So if you use the code free ring at checkout, you can add a trophy to your basket and one of the amazing $60 fantasy champion rings to your cart. Put in the code free ring and you get that ring for free. You can show off to all your yeah, friends. I'll show you. I'll show I've you got mine. one already. You guys <laughs> shut up. Just go to fantasychamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to August. Yes. It hits different. It hits different. Yeah. It really, like... Like, I like am, a linebacker. I am so jacked up for this month of August. There are amazing things in store. Fantasy is back. Preseason will be here. Training camp's ongoing. And August just August just hits different. I look at the show dog. I'm like, we're here. It's time. Hall of Fame game. Well. Third stringers going at it. Yeah. And that's... Is that tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I, and for, for everyone out there, I just I couldn't do it. You that know also, I, could, I couldn't do it. <laughs> that, that also hits different. Like, yeah. there's not a lot of hard hits. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I could not – I couldn't. It's football time for the Hall of Fame game. I it, just couldn't do it. Yeah, I, 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 I told you you could. I mean, I gave you permission, but you, you, you're the kind of – you're the judge. There's, it's very vibe heavy. And the vibe is – now, if Caleb Williams was playing tonight – Then, heck, yes. We you would have done Yes, it. yes. But not yet. No. You've got to preserve very, the power. Very soon. Uh, welcome in, one and all. Five days a week, the fantasy footballers are with you. Five days a week. Um, and if you are a supporter of the show, you even get a sixth episode. If you like Dynasty, you get a seventh episode. If you like DFS and betting, you get an eighth episode. If you like comedy, you get a ninth episode. Man, we do. A lot of shows. I'm proud of us. Um, but five days a week. We're excited to be with you. The journey begins towards a fantasy championship. This show has always been about you, about your team, your league context, uh, giving you actionable information, stat-based, stat-backed information to help you uh, make judgment calls for your team heading into the year. And, and that's what we're all about. This is our 10th season of this show, which is wild. And so it has been a lot of fun. Um, super thankful for the Foot Clan that have come along for the ride and that are back for another season. Uh, we love what we do. I had somebody, I, I, I was talking on Twitter, and uh, we're making some improvements and some changes to our, uh, our Foot Clan membership, and those are coming extraordinarily very soon now <laughs> yes, they're basically coming they're basically extraordinarily, extraordinarily now. now and and i thought i was bailing you out with the no. very soon and you're like <laughs> yeah right now but i that, that wasn't the headline the headline was i went out there and i like i like posted um some teaser tweets about how we're making upgrades and improvements and we've wanted to kind of consolidate the premium things that we provide into into one account and so we're working through that but somebody said are you are you going to be giving up, like doing shows anytime soon? Like not that, bloody likely. <laughs> that was the question, and I was like, no, 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 of course no, not. We're not. This, yeah, it, going into year ten, it's 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 wild, it's crazy. But I, I mean, I genuinely, I'm so confident that this is actually going to be our best year ever. We have some new tools, some new resources, things that we have been working on for years. They're going to roll out, and um, you know, hopefully that pays off in championships that's that's in the end what it's about having fun and having fun means making fun of your friends and winning yeah yeah that is the fundamental truth and um we're excited for the year excited for today's episode we have ice and fire on today's show which means we have the greatest drop that mike has ever put together that's the way to kick off august and also mike how does it yeah. feel to know that your best work is just Derivative? purely oh. original 
it's just, uh look it's it's they did really good work yeah <laughs> like yeah s- sometimes other people in the world do things that are fantastic and you must pay an homage to them so we have news to talk about the ultimate draft kit is available right now ultimate draft 2024 udk jason yeah it's uh what are you chuckling about him i'm He's chuckling because he, he knows said, he said ultimate Okay, I I thought I heard it, and I was letting that I slide. Said, I was I was also trying to read something when uh, so I couldn't confirm. Let the record show. The I ultimate? finally let one slide, <laughs> but it still couldn't get through the ultimate. It didn't get through the <laughs> smirk I saw out of the corner of my eye, but yeah, yeah, you owe me about six hundred of those. Right. So if you want the ultimate uh, draft kit, which we're gonna now have to get a new domain, <laughs> ultimatedraftkit.com. <laughs> You're gonna get. Five months of pronunciation mistakes until I get my tooth repaired fully. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I hope to dunk on you many, many, many times. Yeah, well, it's coming. Uh, the ultimate. Get in right now. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, Mike, we need like a uh, we need a trumpet. Al, can we can we trumpet something up here? Al. Oh. That was it. Yeah. That was. Oh, that wasn't. Oh, that wasn't me. I, thought, I mean, I it's thought, me, but it's a. Vi- I totally <laughs> thought it was you. That wasn't. The- yeah. All right. Yeah, that one I knew wasn't you. But Mike, let's let's talk about something very exciting. August first. What yes. do you got for us? Uh, everyone, pull your car over. Pay attention because this information is shared one time and one time only. Listener League submissions for the fantasy footballers, it's officially open. And what does that mean? The Listener League, it's a 14-team league that the three of us play in, uh, and you can you can win a spot into that league, play with us throughout the season. Here's how you get in. Your submission, should you have been working on it or you're doing it right now, it will be sent to Listener League at fantasyfootballers.com. Listener League at fantasyfootballers.com. And what do we want? We don't want your your trophy pictures. Like we, I don't want, oh, you're too scared to play with me because I'm so good at fantasy football. <laughs> like that. That's not what this league is about. This league is about really fun people, engaged listeners, people that love the show, that want to be in the league with us. It's and just, a great and, league. And having a really – good time along the way so look that might be a short video that you made something funny that you have have made like the my biggest i like uh, the word per- personality personality yeah. yeah exactly show us who you are the the biggest pieces Not of what you've done are the trophy case it doesn't matter and don't send in a wall of text if it's just a wall of text it's gonna it's gonna be difficult to make through the filter no, it's tldr <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. And if it is a wallet text, throw it into Chad GPT and say, "Turn this into <laughs> ten words." Um, we gave you the email address. No, you cannot submit late. No, you can't send it to our support staff and overwhelm them with your listener league request. Um, listener league at fantasyfootballers dot com. That is it. Yep, that is the final time I will mention it. And we just want to feel uh, the personality coming through. Whatever your entry is, as creative as you want to be, we're always. It's always a fun time of year to go through those entries. We do read and check them all it, it's yes and it's an important league to us you know there there's yeah. there's um we try to keep our leagues to a minimum uh we sometimes we're in too many and we don't care about all of them but we actually really care about the listener league i mean brooks was found in the listener league the the biggest loser on the show was part of the listener league this, this is this becomes part of our year part of our season and we can't wait to have uh, and if you a win it, of you with us if you win it you come back that's true. Yeah, I mean, I've won it twice. I'm still here. Yeah, Jason's been in the listener league for quite some time. <laughs> um, Brooks is concerned that the way that you presented meeting him in the listener league and then the biggest loser, it sounded like he was the biggest loser. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. I don't Not want Brooks. anyone to think Brooks is that big of a loser. He did lose. Brian Ketron is. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Brian Ketron is, call me. I mean, what a loser. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, uh, yeah, Bears. The Bears have signed DJ Moore to a four-year, $110 million extension. 
which um, he had two years left on his contract. That's how you get. That's how it, you get out ahead of it, man. It yes, is the largest is. deal in um, Bears history. And I think it's a brilliant deal. You know, you need him to be a part of the future. You have, you know, a rookie under contract at quarterback. Go ahead and just sign this. Make sure this is a done deal going forward. Absolutely, a, a brilliant move. And C.D. Lamb just sits there and goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. wait, 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 agent, hold up. Okay, now go back to him." Over yeah. and over and over. Still waiting on C.D. Lamb's contract, which I think will come. Any minute. It seems like it's close. I mean, we recorded the show a day early. It could be done by yeah. the time we're talking. We could be, sound so stupid right now. Well, no, not anymore. You just uh, – Yeah, we're covering our butts. Yeah, I know. That's why I did that. Um, but Brandon Ayuk, as of this recording, still does not have a new home or a contract. He's got high fives, there though. Was, yeah, there was a video. Uh, I mean, you want <laughs> – this is news stuff. This is hype train. A video of Brandon Ayuk walking up to uh, the coach and the general manager. Some some dap was shared between the three of them, and it's we're, we're trying to analyze what's going on in this footage. Is this a congratulations, you got a deal? Is this a, hey, man, thank you so much for working through this. Enjoy your new location. <laughs> like, it, it, this yeah, could we be, don't know. We don't could, know. It could be so many things. The, uh, the accounts out there that – that uh, have hit on some rumors are saying there's a big trade coming. So we're standing by, but something something big's about to happen. Big wide receivers that need some answers, all of them on Mike's dynasty team. Yeah. Uh, Steelers rookie wide receiver Roman Wilson went down mm -hmm. in practice, carted off. It was a, a major concern yesterday. Right now it's week to week and considered to be okay for the start of the season. So that's but overall good news. It's the fantastic, but you have to keep in mind that with a rookie, when you miss this specific stretch of time, it means his career is going to get off to a slower start. He's going to be a less impact player. He's not. He's like pretty much to me, if he's going to miss the next several weeks, he was a late round, like a last round target. He's not anymore. There's, there's, yeah. there's enough rookie wide receivers I could target that I'm not going to grab the injured guy. Deeper or dynasty leagues, you're looking at, other options outside of Roman Wilson in that offense, if you believe they're going to be better with Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, you're looking at what Van Jefferson is there and Calvin Austin is there. I would rather take and a Calvin shot Austin's on Calvin Austin. Calvin Austin's been running ahead of Roman Wilson anyway. Yeah, Calvin Austin's got crazy speed, has dealt with injuries, but uh, he makes a little bit more sense with like the moon ball from Russell Wilson. Honestly, I think the big beneficiary hey, here, hey, the guy that I've been rising on hey. more and more, I don't think it's who you're going to oh. say. He thinks you're going to say Pickens. I think. No. I think the Muth yeah, baby. is going to be Luth. We are getting Luth in 24. Which, if you're new to the show, that is Pat Fryer Muth, uh, tight end for the Steelers. Fryer Tooth. <laughs> you That's wish. you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Pat Fryer Muth, I, I really do think it's going to be a, a post-hype bounce back season for him. I, you know, not like he's going to be one of these top three or four tight ends, but I think he'll be a top eight tight end. He's not drafted that way. Okay. Yeah, I, I can get. I can get in on that. Also, I apologize for my short-term ranking of Pat Fryermuth as the number two tight end overall. <laughs> that did happen momentarily what? this morning. <laughs> Jason made this. a bit of a typo in Damn. his rankings. I, I wanted to give him 99 targets, but I gave him 99 receptions. Oh, that'd be a good year. Much better for fantasy. So all it takes is uh, 100 catches from him to bump him up? Yeah. Okay. Any other news breaking from Deucer's Alley over there? We do. We do have a full... Hey, Matt's oh, back. We call off, it a full alley. Off the potty. Um, Proud of how you. How you doing, Matt? You doing all right? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good. All <laughs> right. Good. Well, that's Got my good. fire out early. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. Well, what we know about you is if you're not feeling good, you will abandon the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why you hire cleaners, too. Um, all right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will take a break, and then it is time for some ice and fire. All right. Uh, without further ado, we are going to jump into one of our favorite segments leading into the season. This is a – I'm going to – it's kind of like a – it's a little bit like a pre-My Guy opportunity for us. Like we get to – sure. To bring a name up that uh, maybe we're not going to roll into my guys, but we really like. So let's jump in.
ice and fire. All right, we have each selected an ice and fire player for today's show. There is a lot of hype, right? The hype train has been active. And there are players that people have excitement for that maybe we are a little bit on the opposite side of that story. Uh, we're going to keep it a mystery. So I want one of you guys to introduce a name and then reveal whether they are an ice or fire player who would like to begin. I'll start it off. I will start it off with uh, last year's wide receiver 10, um, who is going to an up-and-coming offense, is being drafted on sleeper right now as the wide receiver 17 in the third round. So this is an important fantasy player, a great, awesome player for the last many, many years. I'm talking about Stephon Diggs, baby, a superstar but y'all know, know where this is going. This is not my fire pick. Stephon Diggs this year, he's ice. Ice. His stat line last year was pretty good on the season. Sure. 160 targets, 107 receptions, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns, finishes the wide receiver 10. But I think the Bills knew something. They were the ones with him in the building. They were the ones who went away from him and started winning ball games. And, you know, it's it's one of those things when, when you start to see a decline with a player, it hardly ever reverses course at this age. If there is a decline, I can't – when I say hardly ever, that's hedging something I can't ever remember. Someone that is losing a step post-30 years old and then is like, oh, he's back, baby. Uh, you've got yards per route run, average depth of target, his contested catch rate, right? That's not like a – well, what was – how was he utilized? Maybe his – Targets weren't as valuable. Just like when he was in the situation to catch a ball, was he coming down with it like he always has? And those were down. And we remember how bad the end of last season was. From week 10 on, he averaged 7.5 fantasy points a game. He had one finish inside the top 24. That's not a it's not a high bar to crack. Um, and, you know, now... Crack that bar. <laughs> he, is, he is certainly not used to being the least talented wide receiver in the room. That's what he is now. At this day and age, Nico Collins and Tank Dell are better than him. They also have more experience with C.J. Stroud. They're younger. They are more explosive. They are the better options in this depth chart. And if you look at Stephon Diggs, whilst having more wide receivers on the field, even over the last couple of years while he's dominated, he is not as good in three wide receiver sets. We're talking like last year, Yards per route run with three wide receivers on the field, 1.66. Now, you might not know what that means. Let me tell you. It means bad. It means red. It means very, very not good. A very low number. Among 30 NFL wide receivers with 90-plus targets while having three wide receivers on the fields, here's the only ones with a lower yards per route run. Garrett Wilson, who had no quarterback. Tyler Lockett, Elijah Moore, and Tyler Boyd last year. So I, I do think we saw decline on the field. Originally, I, I chalked it all up to the changeover in offensive coordinator and that now the, the freedom to go somewhere new. I, I was much more open to him having a great season. Now, I am not, I'm not shutting the door that he can't be decent, but where you're drafting him in the third round, there is no way he is a league winner. There's none. That, like that, that range of outcomes to me, to Jason Moore, does not exist. He, you know, if Stroud is awesome, the offense clicks on all cylinders, he throws 35 touchdowns, that could happen. But at his age and ADP to pay off, it you have to exceed ADP. And a soon-to-be 31-year-old wide receiver changing teams in year 10, well, that is not usually the description of someone that smashes their ADP. In fact, if you look back at the last decade, here are the top 10 best fantasy seasons for wide receivers changing teams at year 10. Okay, th this is not all of them. This is the best. This is the success story of those. The top 10. Well, you have Brandon Marshall. Awesome season. We remember that long ago. Goes to the Jets. Was like the mm, dude. Yeah. He finishes the wide receiver three. Okay, great. Then you've got other superstar names in there. Deshaun Jackson, Jordy Nelson, Michael Crabtree, Golden Tate, A.J. Green, Adam Thielen, Brandon Cooks. Just a bunch of great wide receivers. 
And here's their fantasy finishes. 45, 42, 55, 64, 43, 41, 62, 25, and 37. Those are the best? Those are the top 10 best. And well, 25? 25? That, that second best? That was Adam Thielen last year. How do you feel about that? Uh, two comments. One, one, Michael Crabtree thrilled to be included with those other names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, um, what if I told you that Diggs caught 75 for over 1,000 and seven touchdowns? I would say you're super disappointed on spending a third round pick on that. Like actually really disappointed. So that was DeAndre Hopkins in Tennessee last year at wide receiver 22, played 17 games, 137 targets. You would not be unhappy about 137 targets, but obviously not prolific 2020 numbers from Hopkins. I kind of look at those in similar veins. Now we're, we're, we're clearly not the consensus opinion on Diggs. No, I mean, his average draft Because his ADP is, yeah. is at 309, and I know there's a name value aspect there. I guess I'm just curious, like, the implication of the Bills saw something in the locker room and they didn't want it anymore, saw something on the field, I should say, is also saying, Houston, did they make a mistake? I, but but it was probably a gamble. It's, it's not a monetary gamble to the degree that they care if they make the mistake. Yeah, they, they, they're they fine. They they guarantee the rest of his contract and didn't extend him. So they're just saying, hey, let's bring this in, help this offense stay awesome while C.J. Stroud goes into his second year. And I don't think they made a mistake because they don't need Stephon Diggs to be what he was two years ago. They need Stephon Diggs to come in, probably play in the slot a little bit more as he gets older, less explosive. He should be the slot player. You might think it's Tank Dell because he's small. That's just not how this offense operates. Tank Dell was 70% an outside receiver last year. You put Stephon Diggs in the slot, that's better for him. That's better for the Texans. It's a good deal. I think the Texans should be thrilled to have Stephon Diggs there. I don't think you, as a fantasy manager in the third round, will be thrilled to draft him there. That's why he's my eyes. All right, you or me, Mike? Who go ahead. You, you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I, um, I'm very excited about this player, so I'm going to hit this button. Fire. Oh, no tease. Well, the, I, Pure I, gasoline. I, I screwed the whole tease up by starting with, I'm excited about this player. <laughs> so I had to hit the button as it, fast as it, possible. It could have been a ruse. The tease is that I haven't said the name yet. <laughs> um, This is a player that I think uh, – has passed the eye test for me from the moment he took the field. And it's Jaden Reed, wide receiver for the uh, Green Bay Packers. Okay. You did talk him up every time you saw him last year. There And there were there was a time when that was not a popular thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe I made the statement that's the best wide receiver that team has in a very small sample size of the rookie year. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons why I sat here and, and hesitated on making Jaden Reed – a fire player just a little bit was the Jahan Dotson experience of uh, seeing Jahan Dotson on the field as a rookie and really believing in the talent and then seeing the fact that things can just go wrong for you in your sophomore year, some your fault, some not your fault. Um, Jaden Reed is in the midst of a group of wide receivers in Green Bay that has a lot of ambiguity in the fantasy community as to because people, I, I've noticed something. They they want to be fans of Christian Watson. I've noticed that. And they, they also want to be like the Dontavian Wicks uh, homies. Ro Romeo Dobbs is the only one people don't want to like. Yeah, Dobbs is just because he's just and like. Yet, he's in the way. Yeah, <laughs> He's the vanilla ice cream on the roster from a skill standpoint just because he does nothing amazingly but everything good. Mm -hmm. And for some reason it's like, okay, Wicks, woo, these target per route run yeah. and these numbers are amazing. And Watson, oh my gosh, remember those touchdowns and he's a burner. Well, Jaden Reed is in this other category where like I still believe what I said back then. I think he is by far the best wide receiver on this team. I think he has displayed incredible skill from a very – uh, from the jump, right? Uh, not expected. Like, this team didn't expect Jaden Reed to come in and maybe be their number one wide receiver. And you can get a value taking a shot on Watson or Wicks or Dobbs. I don't think you should do that. I think you should spend on J spend up on Jaden Reed, who's the highest ADP of the wide receivers, for a number of reasons. Historically, statistically, over the last five years, the wide receiver won an ADP for a team is the best fantasy wide receiver on their team. Over 70% 70, 70 of the time, we've had this discussion in the past with 49er wideouts or the, yeah, do you deal, take the discount? deal and digs. Do you take the discount? There are pretty profound question marks around the other wide receivers in Green Bay. There is a health and 
and we haven't seen Watson with re uh, with uh, Jordan Reed. Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Goodness, <laughs> I'm gonna get the all of a we sudden. We got there. Uh, yeah, Jordan Reed, the tight end, is also on this team. Rule 86. No, but there are question marks. Wicks, how much opportunity will he have? And then Dobbs, you know, he's 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 in the mix. We got tight ends we like. Uh, we got running backs we like. Jaden Reed is the player that they're going to force feed the football all season long. Um, I did a lot of, like I watched Kyle posted every target and opportunity for Jaden Reed for the entire year. So not just catches, every target. He gets ball. He gets the ball out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. Dealt with injuries at the end of the season. Um, Jaden Reed, to me, the best comp that I found when you look at how he performed at the combine, his physical ability and, and size, and the way he's involved in end rounds and short area targets, but is also a burner down the field because he is he is so fast. It was Golden Tate. Golden Tate, I think, is a perfect match for the kind of player that Jaden Reed is. And right now, Jaden Reed is being drafted as the wide receiver 34. I think you're, you're not having this fire conversation with Jaden Reed saying he's a top 10 wide receiver. You're talking about a player that I think will be a perennial 10 to 20. I think that's going to be an every year type of thing for Jaden Reed. He also gets the ball on the ground at a higher frequency and will this year than Golden Tate ever did. So you take Golden Tate and that 13 to 15 to 18 type of range that Tate would always finish in, and you mix in more Debo Samuel innovative work with the head coach. Um, to me, it's he, he profiles like a Golden Tate. A little bit of Jordan Addison, I think, is in there in terms of the physic, physical size and speed. Uh, it, but but from an eyeball s- standpoint, this reminds me of when we saw Stephon Diggs coming out in Minnesota and it took about three games to recognize this player has a, an innate ability to get open, to read a defense, to be available deep down the field when his quarterback is uh, scrambling out of the pocket. They just had a connection last year. If you watch those targets and those rush attempts, uh, he was their best wide receiver, the Packers, against zone defenses. Oh, wait, he was also their best against man defenses. So he was best in both. Target per out run numbers that you you know we talk about all the time blew him out of the water on both of those. The question marks are around utilization and how often you're on the field, and we worry about three wide receiver sets mm-hmm. and two wide receiver sets. I don't care that much. I don't. I don't care about that specific. They're all, they have – the opportunity to get him the football in a lot of different ways. This is not just line him up and run him down the field. Um, I have a lot of belief in the player, Jaden Reed. And so I think from the perspective of late sixth round draft pick, that is a 10 to 20 finish in my opinion. Um, I, I'm just very, very excited about the future for him. And I think he's being devalued. The- he was the wide receiver 23 last year as a rookie without with massive injury issues at the end of the year. With 94 targets, and if you project him and Watson, when they played together, he still had more receptions and targets than Christian Watson did. So I'm I'm a big Jaden Reed fan, and I just want to get it out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree that he is a very talented wide receiver, and I think the Golden Tate comp is nice. I have a hard time drafting him because I don't see that that same ceiling. Like like you're saying, he he's basically projects to be a wide receiver two, which is a good value in the sixth round, but I just want that. You know what I mean? I want to draft that like Here's, whew, that one that makes me hot and bothered for the upside that can be like a top five guy. He was wide receiver nine over the last seven weeks of the year, and I will tell you this from watching the film on Jaden Reed throughout the year. He scored. Um, he was at eight touchdowns last year. There were four on the table for him on top of those, and he also got into the end zone on the ground two times. So um, – yeah, I, I think you will have some week-to-week ceiling. On the positive side, I will say this. Right now, he does project to have the highest probability of being the wide receiver one for this team. Like, at the at the end of the year, who has the most fantasy points? I'm still betting sure. on the ceiling upside of Christian Watson, but if you're just talking But on, are you telling me you believe Watson's a top-five guy? I think he I has don't the, think that's I think possible. he has the ability, if he plays healthy and is the one, he's got the physical ability, the explosiveness, the size, the body, but... Um, probability says that it's Jaden Reed. No matter what, I think everyone out there is projecting that the Packers offense is pretty darn good. They've got a great head coach. Jordan Love just got the bag for a reason. And so if you're saying, hey, take a shot in the sixth at the number one wide receiver for a good offense, who's going into year two, which is another good bet to make in fantasy, I I don't have any problem, you know, if you want to push your chips on on Reed. And I love that you are pushing him in because it's like one of those things where almost in those, you know, things to remember type of episodes where 
you are remembering how much you loved the film last year because over and over we'd be sitting in the in the game room watching all the games going and you would just be like, dude, that guy's got it. I mean, there's a reason why you love Tank Dell. Yes, because that and, dude's got it. And and it's not like like you know Tank Dell situation. What's more intimidating to have, you know, Nico Collins and that big contract and Stephon Diggs, a potential Hall of Fame player, coming into that environment? And here's here's a Packers uh, wide receiver room that is not as intimidating right. for a player that starred as a rookie. And I feel like, and we had the conversation a few weeks ago. I do feel like the conversation when you include all four, it causes us to lose the focus, but that also gives you a discount in fantasy on a player like Reed. So. Um, I like it. I I'll like put it. it on the table. So, Mike, um, tantalize us with whether All your right. player is a uh, ice or fire. So, I, I I will set it up with this. Jason, you brought up Stephon Diggs, and it's it's fun to bring up that situation because right now the Houston Texans have three players, three wide receivers being drafted as top thirty six guys, which is a it's a very rare occurrence. Like that's a strong bet on Houston, the Houston Texans, their future, their offense, and C.J. Stroud. There is actually another team this year that has three wide receivers being drafted inside the top 36, except that team has a rookie quarterback. Ice. And unfortunately, rookie wide receiver Roma Dunze has to be my ice pick. Hmm. This is coming strictly from an ADP. Feels like it hurts you a little bit. It does because we like the player. Like when you like a player, and then the ADP gets just out of whack, it hurts. Like Sam Laporta, love the player. The guy's just going too early in the draft, and right now that's how I feel about Roma Dunze. Like I said, three players, three wide receivers being drafted inside the top thirty-six. It is not common before this year, in the last. Five years, we'd only seen it happen two times. Once was the Rams with Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup. It went really poorly for Brandon Cooks that year. The other two were fine. Then you had the Pittsburgh Steelers, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. Claypool. <laughs> <laughs> he was, Clay Pale? It was a I, pill. It was a <laughs> pill. I felt like it was a tough pill to swallow. And It was. And Juju. All three were top 36 ADP guys. It worked for Deontay Johnson. And the other two, not so much. And it's not that there's just two other guys in front of uh, in front of Roma Dunze. It's that one of them's DJ Moore, who just got a big bag of money because they've said that you are an elite player. The other is Keenan Allen, who was absolutely still playing lights out last year. And you're just you're automatically number three in the pecking order, and it just doesn't work out. Yeah, there's no way outside of injury that a Dunze is above those two this year. There's right. just no possible way. And like, let's say he, he's number three, and somehow their offense is is still pretty good. We just we know historically a rookie quarterback, roughly two thirds of the time over the last twenty years, so two thirds, so sixty six percent of the time, they can't even support one top thirty six wide receiver. One of them. And we're drafting three of them for Caleb Williams. I, I don't care how it's a new dawn, Mike. <laughs> I don't a new care day. how bullish you are on the future of Caleb Williams. He could be a Hall of Fame player, but he's still a rookie quarterback. And rookie quarterbacks just they have a ceiling. Andy, you brought up the study of of how they just they struggle, especially with passing touchdowns. The yardage could be fine. They've never sustained a double digit touchdown yes. year. It, it, from a from a single receiver, Correct. is that what it is? Correct. And it's just so it is absolutely not there. And where he's being drafted, uh, it's a, it's he's being drafted as the wide receiver thirty three. On average, that player, the wide receiver thirty three, is about nine points per game. We can, but we're going to expand on the three wide receivers over the last seven years. Thirty one teams with three wide receivers in the top sixty. So not even the top thirty six. We're expanding top sixty. The wide receiver three averages 7.7 .7 fantasy points per game. Like that is way under the expectation that you're hoping for when drafting the wide receiver 33. Only seven of those 31 have surpassed 10 points per game. But So essentially what I'm saying with a lot of st fancy statistics here is your probability of, of a return is so low that, that it's just it's not fair 
to Roma Dunze, the player, to be putting this much pressure on him, his rookie season, Caleb's rookie season, while you have these other two superstars on the team. He can be wildly helpful to the Bears. Yes. And, and not – And he can be a good rookie. And and you could still not – you know, he, he might have four or five games where a big play makes him a great play for fantasy, but it, it isn't predictable – so uh, I think it's unfortunate to have to throw the cold water out there on him because, you know, different situation for the same player. If you flip him and Malik Neighbor's situation, you're probably talking – I mean, you're obviously talking completely different outlook as a rookie. Um, but, but yeah, it, it makes sense. It's And, and it's wild because when you think of rookie wide receivers, especially in today's NFL, like these guys are succeeding earlier – and more often now, because the rules are changing and the and the wide receiver skill positions are improving. But did you re guys realize that since 2014, there's only 12 rookies that have passed a thousand yards like, since what year? 2014. So 12 rookies, rookie wide receivers. So in t 12 and 10 years, basically, yeah, or, yeah, or, or nine years, nine, yeah, yeah, and that's including 2014, where there were like three or four of them. <laughs> this is, or is that like post? No, the, the, the only the 2014 guys. So that would have been Beckham, Mike Evans, and Kelvin. There's the, just their rookie year. Get bodied, Sammy Watkins. <laughs> just, just saying, it's that that number was really shocking to me because I expected it would be much higher than just 12 guys. All right, we'll take a break and come back with uh, some more ice and fire picks. All right. I'm going to kick it off here with another ice pick because this is ice and fire. You don't know how we're going. And I'm telling you, this little itty-bitty baby boy, Devon Achan, could get broken very easily. Just kidding, baby. <laughs> He's on fire. Oh, Devon Achan, I have gone back and forth all season. All off season, I should say. And I am firmly... 100% at the finish line, and I see the end. I see it clearly. Devon Achan is a league winner, is awesome, will succeed this season, will get more opportunity this season. It will be such a foolish thing at the end of this year when we go back and look at his rookie season and we go, why weren't we drafting this dude in the first? Well, I know why, because he's – He's small. I get it. Like this. This is obviously. Look, this is a fire pick. And I can go down. Share. I can go down in flames and timeshare. And they drafted another speedy back. Uh, you've got the the touchdown machine and Raheem Mostert. There's a reason he's in the third. It, there's a lot of ways it could go wrong. I am here to tell you he is a fire pick and it is going to go right. He is an explosive play waiting to happen. Number one in next gen rushing stats over expectation per attempt. He was 2.87 yards over expectation per attempt. That's number one. Number two in that was less than half, and it was Christian freaking McCaffrey at 1.32. He led all NFL running backs in, in yards per touch, 7.7. .7. Um, and here's a stat from our Liar Liar episode in, in March, just to put his freakish breakaway speed into a clearer view. Achan had 103 total carries rookie season. That's it. Just barely broke 100. He now has as many total runs of 40-plus yards as Reggie Bush had in his 10-year career, who was known as a breakaway guy. So I don't have to talk anyone into HM being a, a free. Reggie Bush catching strays. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you've got your Heisman. You're fine. Grow up. Um, yeah. He has a, does he have <laughs> it? More strays. What is does, happening? Does he have it back? Why are we He's got it back now, right? It. Yeah, he does have it back. Leave Reggie alone. Uh Look, Reggie, you were you were electric and awesome. You're, you're no A chan. You're no you're no A chan. No, no, no. I want if I make Reggie great, and I'm saying A chan is better. That just builds my case. So okay, Reggie, you're so good. Okay, um, weirdo. Over the last six years, we've averaged two running backs per year who have finished as a running back one with fewer than 17 opportunities a game. Okay, that so there are a couple guys that crack so like into super that. efficient players. Super efficient players, and if you had to put your money on who's going to be super efficient. Maybe like the most efficient rookie season of all time going into year two. I don't know. This sounds like a good bet. Um, he, he also averaged in his nine full games. I don't games. know if I like this, Jason. <laughs> HN Jason. Oh, I'm hot and bothered. HN Jason this is, is a different fi Jason. Fire is right because I am hot and bothered. Um, yeah. it, it's very similar to your Jaden Reed. 
Last year, you watched Jaden Reed, and you were just like, D- uh, he's unbelievable. He's another level. This is I'm trying to remember what I felt, experienced, and every time you watched every play, it's like the NFL. Don't tell us how you felt. The NFL can't handle this guy. I'm gonna I'm going pantsless because he deserves it. What? In his nine full games last year, clip that. <laughs> I'm going pantsless because he deserves it. In his in his nine full games last year, he already averaged 15.1 opportunities a game. That's enough for him to finish as a top ten back. Obviously, if you if you have some breakaway touchdown runs, you're you're at that point you're a lock. He's going to be more and more involved, and he is going to grow as a pass catcher in this offense. He lined up in the slot 35 percent of his pass plays. That's highest in the NFL last year as a rookie. Of his 36 targets, and keep that number in mind. He only had 36 targets. Of his 36 targets, he was the number. He was the first read on 67 percent of them. That's the highest in the in, in among all running backs. That is the same total amount of first read targets that Rashad White had. Okay, and Rashad White had 70 targets last year. He is not getting dink and dunks. He's not like, oh, a, a little safety valve. This is a prescriptive, scripted play that says, hey, let's find a way to get A-Chan the ball. He is... Which adds up... Uh, just kind of jump in. Yeah, 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 jump in. It adds up to the efficiency that you saw because they... When you have a committee or you have a rookie and you know they have a certain level of skill and ability and you're not putting them on the field every single play, when you do, you generally use them. That's kind of what that is saying in summation, right? Yeah. When he was on the field, they designed plays to utilize it. Yeah. Uh, R- Ryan Heath uh, does does great work on, on Twitter. You can follow him. He had, a, he had a tweet talking about how efficient he was and the historical data among rookie running backs drafted in the first three rounds who outperformed their weighted opportunity by two and a half points per game. So that that's a... That's the stat I was talking about earlier. Five of five had a volume increase in year two, and four of five topped 20 fantasy points per game. That is a crazy high efficient number. The only one that didn't have Jeff Fisher as a, as a head coach. I <laughs> like this head coach, and this head coach likes Devon Achan. Don't take it from me. Take it from Mr. McDonald. Um, I'm seeing a pro that, uh, not to say that he wasn't a pro last year, he was, he was a rookie that, um, really impressed his teammates with his ability to digest and execute. And he really impressed guys about how the game, you, you hear this much, the game's not too big for him, right? Well, that's cool for Devon if that's where his ceiling, where he wants his ceiling. Thankfully for the Miami Dolphins, that's not. So he's expanded um, roles, expanded, uh, you know, different ways that he can get the ball. Um, but he's he's really uh, – he's become a guy that pretty much every oh person God, on the offense up. counts on. Just listen. To know, Just listen. Um, Take it from Ronald McDonald. He, he, and, and that helps everyone. So he, he's become a pro, diet, strength. Um, it's really cool to see. He, he's not he done. taste of success. One and uh, fortunately for us – Who authorized this? I did. From Mr. I McDonald's Mr. McDonald, if farm. You're, if you were watching YouTube, you see us cracking up because I said from from McDonald's. <laughs> my, my, Mike McDonald's uh, over here. So you it was a his, boring quote. But you listen, get his, name, clear, his name, name is Mike McDaniel. We yes. have no more listeners. They're yeah. all gone after that. Yeah, they all went to go draft Devon A. Chan. <laughs> no, they deleted they, the show. What listen, was that? It was him saying that he is now an integral part of the offense that every – player on the field is relying on Devon A. Chan. <laughs> they talked about his diet being serious. Is that it McDonald's? That he is because, is because of the McDonald's. That he is <laughs> his body is ready, he is more involved, and he is not content to just stay at what his great rookie season was. That's that's what he was saying. It was a little boring, but the <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot boring. The content is important for fantasy managers to know that the the direction the arrow is is headed up. And I obviously, if he gets injured, whatever. But if he's on the field, he's going to win you weeks on a, on the reg. I will, I will, I will say two seconds worth of comments on H and then we'll move on because I don't, I don't really have a lot to add. <laughs> One, I do believe that Devon H M will be a league winner this year. So I, I, I'm with you, my man. Two, I think we can get too lost in the hyper efficiency and the kind of crazy numbers. I think it's better to focus on is this a really good football player in a really good offense with a really good coach and 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 he seems committed to being great. 
And I think, you know, it, it do, you don't need to make him a 7.3 a carry his whole career guy to, to be amazing for fantasy. That is not – that's unsustainable. So we don't – we can be like, wow, that was an amazing rookie year. I hope he has a better year this year. And I think that's very possible. I – you know, Raheem Mostert, ironically, was was crazy efficient as well. That's part of this offense. So, yeah, I I'm I'm with you. I yeah. believe. Is it my turn to talk? Uh, we you want to play got, that clip? I've got a 45 minute yeah. conversation. Wait, hold, here. hold on. Uh, just listen up. Um, I'm seeing a pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you think anybody in the press conference was like, oh, why did I ask that? <laughs> Oh, I should not have asked that. Why? Yes, no questions only. He's much more fun in person if you got the video. Well, he's a fun guy. He is a fun guy. Yeah. He's just got a funny cadence for uh, podcasting. <laughs> um, I was about to make Jonathan Brooks my ice player on today's show. And you knew better. <laughs> and so I will, t I will briefly tell you why. Um, it is a fear. Jonathan Brooks, rookie running back, ACL tear opportunities in Carolina uh it was going to be built around the fact we've actually had a lot of second round uh, running back flops in year one a little bit worried about that Charbonnet effect of uh you know you've got other running backs and and maybe it just doesn't pan out you draft him early he doesn't help your team by the time he's okay he, you've moved on all these reasons for Jonathan Brooks the reason I did not put him in here after Kyle spent time building my argument with me <laughs> I pivoted this morning here's some fundamental reason he's a great player Mm -hmm. and I don't want to make a Michael Carter, Brees Hall mistake with Jonathan Brooks. So I'm just throwing it out. Brees Hall was on a bad football team with a depth chart in front of him, and the best player won real quick, and I, I do think that's possible with Jonathan Brooks, so I'll stay neutral there. Instead, I will use this opportunity to just dump all over Aaron Jones. Oh. Nice. And I've, I've historically been a monster Aaron Jones fan. Um. Aaron Jones is one of those guys that's always been like crazy efficient where we always we're always like oh if he just had like yeah unleash Adrian Peterson workload unleash Aaron Jones you cowards but this you know you do have to turn the page sometimes in fantasy football and um he's 29.6 years old the Packers moved on and I, I, you can say whatever you want about the contract situation they moved on they were done with Aaron Jones they moved on to Josh Jacobs um, who was as inversely efficient as you know as, as you can be last year? They moved on. Thirty-year-old running backs. It's not a great bet when they change teams. Um, since 2000, there was a great article by Marvin on our website, Marvin Eloquin. Um, since 2000, only 16% of top 24 fantasy seasons have come from running backs over 29 years old. Gets even worse when you're talking about the inefficiency situation there in Minnesota, where Kevin O'Connell says. He wants to throw the football and has ranked 28th in rushing attempts for two consecutive years, 31st in neutral rate. You're not going to have as many opportunities on this roster where we all – did we all put Minnesota at the bottom of that division? Yes. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that's what we did. We did. Um, it's it's a problem. It's a problem to me. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, I'm worried about touchdown opportunities for Aaron Jones, and I'm worried about the offense not being successful – I'm worried about Ty Chandler being worked in because you always work somebody in with Aaron Jones in your backfield. Aaron Jones can prove me completely wrong if he catches five passes a week. Like if that's just what happens a lot. in this offense, um, then I will be proven wrong. But I think it is a it's a tough bet to make drafting him as a top twenty four running back where I have players later in the draft that I have more confidence in that are on the front side of their career. Um, so I you know. Aaron Jones has just been a player this offseason where I just haven't had the confidence. So Kevin O'Connell has not proven the ability to – I mean, we went into last season and uh, the the Madison truthers were Oof. to ready ready to be there. We're already dead, man. And um, Leave us alone. Yeah, and so I just don't have the confidence that Aaron Jones is going to be able to have consistency for your lineup this year. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I have been pro Aaron Jones. Um, the end of last year, he was awesome. It was he was utilized like crazy, and he was so efficient. I mean, it, he ended the season just showing like he hasn't lost anything. Obviously, when you get to thirty, that is a an important number for a running back. When you switch teams, that is always a big yellow flag that could uh, cause issues. When your team goes from a great offense to a 
more bottom half offense. That's bad for the running back when you've got a rookie quarterback. So there's a lot of things that are certainly stacked up against Aaron Jones. I, I still didn't... think he's got it. I, I believe that, you know, the head coach is very, very smart. I think that he'll unleash Aaron Jones in the right way and he'll be efficient. But I don't I don't see him. He's certainly not a league winner. He's well, I hope he unleashes him better than Madison. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, Madison, here, here's the thing. Here, here's the, the only difference, uh, you know, that I think is – you know, we got to be intellectually honest with the Madison comparison. Last year, you know, there was debate on Madison. Uh, like him or don't no, like him. Aaron you, Jones there is was a no, perennial. there was no debate. You out no, of your I mouth every time said he's it. a bum, he sucks, he's not good. Aaron Jones is if, actually if, good. If you want to find the case for Aaron Jones, it, it, it's a Alvin Kamara late career success in in New Orleans case, which is catch the football, be efficient on your touches, but you're going from a top offense to potentially a bottom offense. I mean. We all agree that like Darnold is going to transition at some point Most in the year. Most likely, yes. And Darnold hasn't looked great. Yeah, Aaron, and Aaron the jo schedule starts with six, five or six tough, tough games for Minnesota. And so then you're saying, okay, you're going to elevate over the back half of the year for a guy that hasn't played 17 games in a it, long, long time. Yeah, I mean, I, to to me, I feel like Aaron Jones is locked in as a running back too. Ooh, like I'm not there. You you think he'll finish outside the top twenty four running backs? I think so. See, I, I I don't think he's got the potential to be a running back one this year, but I don't think he's got a got the potential barring injury to be a running back three. He'll he'll be involved in his quality. So if you're drafting him in the six, it's a roster construction thing to me, where it's like RB eighteen off the board right now. That's where he's going. Is it? Yeah. Sounds about right. But uh I, I think he's just a, a veteran that might not have that league winning upside, but in the sixth round you're looking at, you know, if you can get a running back two in the in the sixth round, that's uh, it. It can be important to your roster. All right, moving on. All right, if you've done the math, there will be no suspense. Fire! It's a fire pick. Like so, I had not done the math though. Yeah, but our listeners have. Oh, that's probably true. <laughs> yes, it is. It's Jalen Waddle of the Miami Dolphins who is going right now as the wide receiver eighteen over on Sleeper. And I have extreme confidence in Jalen Waddle having a true bounce back season. Last year's end of season numbers, they're not great. 104 targets. He caught 72 for just over 1,000 yards and only four touchdowns. That was the wide receiver, 34. You need to fill in some gaps here, though. He missed three games. So he, he put up that production in 14 games. On the season, that's like a 1,200-yard pace. You give Jalen Waddle 1,200 yards last year, he's not being drafted as the wide receiver 18. And then look closer at the the behind-the-scenes metrics, not just the raw numbers at the end compared to last year, where, where uh, by the way, in 2022, he was the wide receiver 7. Tyreek Hill was on that team. Just a quick reminder mm -hmm. that that this, was, this is not a, well, Jalen Waddle can't succeed with Tyreek. He has already done it. He finished as the wide receiver seven while Tyreek was doing Tyreek things, which are impossible to stop. But so comparing 2023 to 2022 for Jalen Waddle, his yards per route run, very, very close. His targets per route run actually went up. He had uh, his pro football focus grade went up. The issue was number one, touchdowns. Those definitely went down. And two, besides the games that he missed, Watching the Miami Dolphins play, Jalen Waddle was off the field all the time. I was going to say his uh, injuries per lining up to run a route yes. went way up last year. Yes, he was chronically injured and trying to fight through those injuries. So I'm going to make the assumption of health that, that Jalen Waddle's going to start the year healthy. Let me jump in because the okay. one objection I've heard from our listeners okay. was we talked about Jalen Waddle earlier this offseason and literally somebody replied and said, LOL – banking on Waddle's health, I will never draft that player again. Because the the burns and the fact that you – you know, there's something like – Julio Jones had these years. Mm -hmm. he, yes. had the, he had these years where he didn't miss that many games, but if you had asked us all after the season how many games he missed, we probably would have said like 40. Yeah, like <laughs> because every it felt, game. It feels almost worse when you – is he out there? Is he yes. – snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. He's on – oh, he's on the field. Oh, no, he's off the field. Um, that was the experience with Waddle last year is is that I think that the the bridge too far for a lot of fantasy managers is presuming health. Sure. Let, let me let me make the counter argument there. Okay. Some guys 
are weak and they get injured and they stay off the field. Okay. And then they miss games. He played in 14 games last year, 17 games a year prior, 16 games a year prior. Like That's he, the rebuttal. Is he played every single game as a sophomore and he missed a single game as a as a rookie. So there's this is not a well Jalen Waddle misses tons and tons of games every single year. But th again, the point being he actually improved on a lot of metrics. He is the perfect player for zone coverage, which the the NFL is moving to that more and more and Good luck guarding the Miami Dolphins in in man is can the best cornerback in the league man up against Tyree Kill? No, I would say oh, if you do that over the course of a game, you're going to end up having a bad. I think time. the best cornerback in the league probably says no. The best cornerback in the league, they're going to say yes. yes. They're going to say <laughs> yes, but can they actually do it? And and Tyree Kill's numbers against zone are incredible. It, last year, the highest yards per route run in zone. Who's number two on that list above Justin Jefferson, above Amon Ra St. Brown, above Puka, Debo, Brandon Ayuk? It's Jalen Waddle. Like, Jalen Waddle was actually very, very good in in his in yards per route run and opportunities. I think everything was completely related to injury and completely related to expectations of last year. Like, he was the wide receiver nine. So that was admittedly devastating. You know, like I had Waddle on a lot of teams last year and it didn't work. But that doesn't like that year is gone. I think Jalen Waddle, all the arguments of like, okay, is it a good player on a on a good offense with a good head coach? Check, check, check. Yeah, I you know, your your fantasy football emotional reaction is going to be proportional to the investment made. Yes. And so because of Wait, that and I understand cuz I re I have that happen too. If you are if you're drafted at wide receiver 30 and you get hurt a little bit for 3 years, you know, one year of injury riddled play for Waddle feels like it's the story of his life. And so that is my way of saying he is discounted. Yes. See, and I wide receivers going uh Wide receivers going around Jalen Waddle in the draft right now. Jay, Stephon Diggs is one spot ahead of Jalen Waddle. Yeah, no, thank you. Then you have uh, DJ Moore. You can make that's fine. You can make the argument, but I'm still on the side of it's a rookie quarterback, and I'm not going to draft DJ Moore in the I'd, third round. I'd much rather have Waddle. And then Malik Neighbors, who's a rookie himself in a in a tough situation. So like the guys right around him, for me, it's really really easy that if and I'm willing, I'll go RB RB. Jalen Waddle as my one. That's where my confidence is in him, despite him being the number two on yeah. his team. I I um I'd be nervous, but it might be the right move. I I do feel like an honorable mention fire for me would be DJ Moore in okay. the discussion. Um, you know this this contract is a reflection on like he was one of the best players I watched play football last year, which I didn't want to watch Justin Fields play quarterback very often. Some things he does were exciting. Some things were infuriating. But DJ Moore was just next level. And yeah. um, he got rewarded for it early. I still think he is – like your argument against the Dunes, they, like your bet should be on more there. I mean, I just – I'm it, it really, really should. Sure. In I, my opinion. It, no, I, I have no problem in – especially of the three of them. Like I, one of them could really succeed. Like one of the Bears wide receivers I'm talking about. I think it's, it, it's going to happen. it would – I'd put the bet on DJ Moore, but it's between him and Keenan Allen, I think is it's not a slam dunk that it's DJ Moore. I think it's What does Mr. McDonald think? <laughs> close. I think he had well, a farm. Yeah. Um and he, he sent some uh some ice. It was great because you set the you set it all up with the oh, wrong no. name. Yeah. It was like it's great. You're like but um you got the clip and everything. A lot of homework on this Look, episode. When you love Devon H. You, you really do. do you, where's do. the tattoo going? Do you know about um, audio editing? Uh, let's talk to the owl on that one. Whoa! We, cause, cause Did we, you? Uh, no, no, no. I was privy to you assigning the clip to Al. Al, I'm going to defend you here. Thank you. You said, well, I heard you say it'll probably be about a minute. Yeah, it was a beautiful minute. That was, that it was, was a beautiful no. minute. It was an important minute. I sat in real time and listened to a 10-minute quote. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Truly, it is not fair to Mr. McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> 
It is not fair to Mr. McDonald to have to come. You know how you, you, you have these speeches and then you've got to go up after someone that's just crushing. You know, you're, oh, like we opened for him. I was his opener. Yeah, it was like, okay. oh, that's oh, not you fair. Were. He you should were. have opened for me. I see. And then, and then it would have been okay. I, but I, I'm, I'm the headliner. I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> McDonald. I apologize. I was too busy laughing. What did he say? Oh, I didn't. Did yeah, he say I he likes A Chan? He said the A Chan is a pro. Mm -hmm. That he's uh, focused on. I his did hear diet, that a few times. That the that that he's focused on his diet. That he's not Woo. content, and that the entire offense is completely relying on him. Okay. Okay. Well, that well, was I'm uh, seeing a pro. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Gosh. Make it stop. Stop it, Al. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of this show. But we are back to five days a week, so please join us Monday through Friday, every single day. The fantasy footballers, and do me a favor. Um, it helps the show if you are listening on Spotify. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, there's a follow button, and um, you'll want to click that button. Like if you're coming back to the show for the season. Um, it doesn't always keep downloading the episodes anymore. Like you got to click follow fresh right. every year. So click that follow button and uh, get all of our free episodes delivered straight to your and it's, pocket. It's only for Spotify and Apple. If you're on YouTube, don't even don't you dare click that plus. We just what want is, Apple and Spotify, right? Uh, I get what you're doing. I mean, they are still I subscribed don't. on on YouTube though. But you can click the bell. Yeah. You can you can bell Come it on. up. It's August. Bell we're, it up. we're coming every day. And don't forget about the ultimate draft kit, <laughs> as I was uh, saying, ultimatedraftkit.com. That'll do it. We'll catch you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show. So we'll be back again. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.